So obviously you're Chief Content Officer at Drive Tribe. But before that, you were at the Telegraph, Trinity Mirror, and Witch in, I guess, Chief Digital Officer roles, all about digital transformation of, of publishers and innovation from, from, uh, from having a look through your kind of LinkedIn profile yeah. and from conversations we've had previously. So massive, massive change. What, tell us a little bit about um, Drive Tribe and what, what, your, what it is and what you're setting out to achieve, just as a kind of intro for the listeners. Well, we're trying to build a next generation publishing company. Okay. If you think about how publishers have approached um, digital in the past, yeah. I mean, it's quite often, you know, they have like sort of different departments who do digital yeah. uh, and they take a very sort of, you know, approach to it that's probably very grounded in print. They tend to think about, you know, there's a home page, which is a bit like the magazine cover and you put yeah. your best editorial content there. And engagement with the readers is usually on most publication sites is sort of comments below the line, yeah. which you know tend to be something of a sort of sewer or cesspit. Yeah. Uh, and most of the people who work at the publisher hate everything about the comments section. Okay. And you know will complain to HR if they're asked to go down there and engage because quite often they're the victims of abuse. Now, yeah. in practice, there are huge communities all over the internet who really care about various subjects. Yeah. Uh, and so a publisher really ought to be trying to harness those communities yeah. and put content and that community together. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do with Drive Tribe. Okay. So okay. there's, there's several aspects to it. Um, Drive Tribe itself is structured around tribes, the idea that yep. people are passionate about something and want to get together and talk about that. Yep. So it's organized into tribes. Um, it's feed-based, so okay. that when you as a user come along, you see a feed of content taken from the tribes right. um, that you've said you're interested in. But we personalize that feed, so we show you the things that you're most likely to be interested in based on your pre previous engagement. And if okay. you look around the publishing space at the moment in the UK, I mean, there is nobody who is really personalizing yeah. their, um, their content. Everyone talks about personalization. You can see it in emails and retailers do it. And Amazon have yeah. you know, always had the people who bought this, they probably yeah. buy that. But publishers have never really embraced personalization. And then I think the other aspect of Drive Tribe that's important is the community publishing aspect of it. Yeah. Because although Drive Tribe has its own in-house editorial team, we are a publisher, um, most of what gets published on the platform is contributed by the users and we have all sorts of there we have you know professional photographers and videographers right. we have brands like Porsche and then we just have people who really care about a subject and you know some of these people have got like kind of amazing catalogues of photos they've taken themselves or amazing stories to tell over the years yep. so, so that's what we're trying to do great and just for our just for our listeners obviously drive tribe is I guess it's a it's a Publishers, publisher, bit digital publishing business all around, but anything to do with the car? Is that a good way to describe it? Is yeah, it's anything you, to do with, with um, the there's lots of motorbikes on there as well now. So okay. anything, to Any, do, anything to do with motoring, motoring. but the, the broad sort of set of motoring things. So yes, there's people yeah. who care about, you know, brands of cars yeah. like Porsche and Ferrari. Yes, there's people who care about specific engines, yeah. but we also care about adventure and travel okay. and lifestyle and culture. You know, the car is a sort of vehicle, the literal vehicle for getting yeah. you to something exciting. And if you think back to things like, you know, Top Gear and, some of our founders um, yeah. roots you know that was all about that was using the car to have an amazing experience yeah so you're <laughs> founded by obviously Jeremy Clarkson Richard Hammond and James James May um, and what how does that what's the overlap between and how does that mesh with Grand Grand Tour and obviously Amazon's Amazon's new well their new program on Amazon um, yeah how does it how do you how does that knit together Clarkson, yeah. Hammond and May are the founders and shareholders of Drive Tribe. Yeah. We've already taken outside investments, so 20th Century Fox yeah. have invested, Jim Breyer's invested, who um, you know, was one of the early investors in Facebook. Yeah. So you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's a proper startup now with yeah. outside VC backing. Yeah. Um, and obviously the Grand Tour has been commissioned by Amazon for the, for the three of them to produce, but yeah. that's a separate company, a separate thing okay. they do. Obviously there's a lot of crossover. Yeah. I mean, ultimately Drive Tribe, we want there to be other tribes, you know, fashion tribes, food okay. tribes. It just made sense to start with Drive Tribe because we have such a sort of asset in, in Clarkson, Hammond and May and obviously they're known for the motoring space. Yeah. But I think, I think, yeah, yeah. And I think the future for the company isn't, is motoring is always going to be important but there's, there's other sort of verticals we can move into once we've proved this model of what a next generation publisher might look like. Oh, it's fascinating. So the vision is much, much bigger. And talk to me a little bit about that blend between, because from the outside it looks like um, you're a sort of a blend between a bit of social network, a bit of user generated content and a bit of, a bit of publisher. How, how do you manage that mix? And yeah, well, I tend to describe it as half social network, half UGC, and half publisher. But of course, yeah. that adds up to one and a half yeah, things. Indeed. So, uh, yeah, probably um, adds up to your day. I suspect. <laughs> so more, more, yes. Yeah. Yes, I'm certainly very busy dealing yeah. with it all. Um, but the, yeah, I mean, it is a mix of those things. You know, we we recognise as a publisher 
there are things we can do that, that users can't do. We have budgets to go places. We can yeah. get access to manufacturers that people can't. We can take the reader places. Yeah. They can't naturally go on their own. I mean, you yeah. know, they've probably got jobs. They can't just fly off to Europe and yeah. <laughs> get in a helicopter and take a picture of some roads. So, so we can get access to places that other people can't go. But, yeah. but the community, the social aspect of it is all important. You know, too often, I think, publishers, you know, throw their content out there. And as I say, they, they just sort of limit community interaction to some people arguing below the line at the bottom of the page under some outbrain yeah. modules and some related links and yeah. everyone tries not to talk about it. For us, community is key. It's all about the passion. You know, that's what, what drives you yeah. to come to, to Drive Tribe. It's too easy to make motoring puns in the, yeah, <laughs> accidentally. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. um, that, that's what gets people to come to the platform. You know, they're passionate about a particular thing. And once there, we want them to contribute. We want them to communicate with each other. We want them to be, you know, uploading content. Yeah. Uh, and, and we want them to be, you know, having back and forth with the sort of big brands and big players and famous people yeah. like Damon Hill who are on the platform already. Oh, great. So it must feel a bit of a, I guess for you, a bit of a person, a bit of a breath of fresh air. I guess having been in some very, very large, well-established publishers where I suspect you're probably having to drive a lot of, a lot of change as well as mindset, whereas here you've got a fresh, fresh page, really. Yeah, I mean, so the Telegraph that. had been around for 160 years and yeah. there were hundreds, which yeah. um, 60, so they'd all been around a long time. And obviously it is harder, you know, trying to move a legacy publisher into the digital because, sure. you know, they have... You know they have large revenue streams attached yeah. to their print and they're products. they're very important. Yeah. And, and yes, and you don't you don't want to jeopardise those. I mean, the good thing about a startup and a new way of doing it is you can just sort of get things digitally right at the start. I think. Yeah. So if you think about things like um, video, yeah. uh, if you're a traditional publisher and you buy your video in, you know, you probably get it from Reuters or ITN or somewhere. Yeah. It comes actually as television footage, and then like you tend to put it out onto the website as is. Whereas yeah. we think a lot already about how we're going to make things like that work on mobile and on social, yeah. you know, and you can all see there's lots of, you know, there's digital startups that have made businesses out of, you know, video that works 100% with the sound off because, you know, large subtitles, yeah. really thinking through what the first three, four, five seconds are like to make yeah. sure people are engaged. And we've been able to apply those lessons from day one, as opposed to trying to change existing workflows and existing contracts and existing ways of doing things, yeah. which makes it much, much harder, I think. Sounds like you need a podcast on the, uh, podcast <laughs> well, on, on the channel. And I, I, when we last met, it was probably 18 months ago now, you were on a, you were on a panel and, and the panel was, I think, all around user-generated content versus branded content. And if I remember rightly, you were quite in the camp of, of the kind of branded content. Um, how, how, do you, how do you feel about now this blend between user-generated and, and, and branded content? <laughs> Well, as in publishers' own produced content? Yes, yes, sorry, the branded content, what I mean, sometimes, sometimes I call it professional content produced by a publisher, or you might commission somebody to, as you say, go off and take some photos or write an article about a journey or something. Yeah, um, no, I think it depends what, what you're expecting. If, if you're a sort of a traditional publisher, and yeah. you're, you know, effectively your product is a sort of homepage in which you pay journalists to produce content about a known, probably news-driven set of yeah. things, that then professionally produced content is probably all you want on your yeah. homepage and it would be weird if, you know, Brian from Staines turned up and wrote his take on Donald Trump yeah. and he slapped it at the top of the homepage. Yeah. That, I mean, that just doesn't really work, does it? From a, so if you think about a publisher as being more of a social network as, as, as much yeah. as it is a publisher, then it makes a lot more sense for a normal user to turn up and see things from the people that they have previously engaged with yeah. or things that a very clever machine learning process can calculate that you are more likely to be interested in and then if Brian from Staines has a unique take that chimes yeah. with you or he's got some photos that he's got and no normal publisher's yeah. got then it makes perfect sense for that sort of thing to show up the, yeah. the problem with traditional brands has always been you know they care a lot about their homepage and what their homepage says about their worldview yeah. they don't like to personalize it and, and they want it to be professional yeah. but when you turn up to Twitter or Facebook you don't expect professional content to be at the top and you know Facebook has actually gone out and changed its algorithm so content from your friends is more likely to appear at the top yeah. and I think the next, the next generation publisher needs to harness those two things yeah. how can you put together a sort of feed based approach to things so people see relevancy and people yeah. they care about and people they have an emotional um, engagement yeah. with but also how can we sort of let you know use our existence as a professional publisher yeah. to get you know that high quality content that in practice only we can pull off so those, I guess that personalization and those algorithms is a hot, hot topic today, obviously, 
Facebook, et cetera, fake news and this whole, whole, whole idea that actually there's a, there's a risk that we only get, we continue to get shown the things we interact with and therefore our worlds become very, very small and we miss the stuff in the periphery. Is that something you're starting? I mean, how you, how you, great to hear how you're, how you're, how you're handling that personalization and how are you thinking about trying to get that breadth in so that if, I guess the example might be if I'm only interested in Porsches because that's what I'm engaging in initially, that then my world just becomes Porsche focus and I ignore, I ignore everything else. Um, I mean, I think that's probably less of a problem in a sort of hobby or passion area. I mean, it is a problem in hard news yeah. if um, you, know, you don't find out about important world news events. Yeah. But the flip side of that has always been, even for traditional publishers, like I, I'm an Arsenal fan, I couldn't care less about any other football team, I'm not interested in reading about their mm. transfer news. Yeah. Um, I don't care about what their results were. All I care about is the score and whether it impacts yeah. Arsenal's position in the league. Yet somehow I'm expected to go to a sport page and sort of pick out bits I don't care about yeah. and try to find the Arsenal story. When you care about something and are passionate about it, you basically want that. And there's a reason you don't want the other stuff. Yeah. And of course, the tribe model that Drive Tribe has, you know, in which you choose to follow tribes just as you choose which Facebook pages to yeah. follow. Uh, you know, allows you to select which things you care about. So in some ways, self selection <coughs> by indeed, the consumer. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And then we have mechanisms by which we show you other stuff. We have trending content. Yeah. We will have tribe recommendations. You know, people who follow these tribes also do this one. Yeah. But in practice, the flip side of what you said is also weird. It's like you have declared that you like this set of things. Yeah. But we as a publisher want to force you to read all this other stuff. Yeah, that and you absolutely. Don't care there's, about. A happy, <laughs> there's a happy balance in the middle yes. where. And I think it is yeah. different between news in which yeah. filter bubbles reducing people's worldviews, only giving them one side of the story is yeah. dangerous in ultimately to society as a whole yeah. and sort of important, but more sort of passion or hobby areas um, in which, you know, you care about a thing, you don't care about the other things. Yeah. What's the point of putting the other things in front of you if you don't care about them? Yeah. And how are you managing the user-generated content? Are you having to pre-moderate before it goes up, or are you allowing the community no, no, to I do that? No, I mean, it's a drive, drive Tribe is a lar large platform. You know, yeah. it's already got, it's already have running at sort of four plus million users a month. There's okay. no way we can, we would or could or should moderate right, all right. that stuff. It's a platform for people to publish on. So you've got four million a month. Have you? That's quite impressive. How long do you think? How long do you? Uh, two months. Two months. Two wow. Months. So okay. yes, growth has been. Um, yeah, that's pretty staggering. Yeah, big already. Um, but you know, and, and I talk about us as a publisher. There are loads of communities out there. That, that we don't publish content mm. into. Um, I mean, there's one about beautiful dashboards. It's just photos of beautiful dashboards. Actually, we are about to start publishing okay. into it because, of course, we have access to cars. So we're about to start making sure we record so a that, video. But that, those people have coalesced around. And likewise, okay. Dogs in Cars is run by a man in Germany yeah. who just loves photos of dogs in cars. Oh, and we, okay. we, d we don't need to commission photo shoots of dogs in cars. So your users are therefore, <coughs> at that point, identifying areas of interest and then if you want you you have the ability to yes. put in professional yeah. content so there's 20,000 plus tribes already that people have set yeah. up and they've tried to sort of coalesce around form a community around yeah. and one of the things we do is kind of you know sprinkle <laughs> sprinkle yeah. bits of you know sort professional of, content yeah. around to help them but in yeah. practice those things run themselves dogs in cars does not need anybody in this office to yeah. like take a load of um Posh cars up to um, Crufts. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know it's, there are people okay. doing all that. All them might themselves. be an interesting idea. Though, actually. <laughs> I did actually look it up yeah. on the map, but it didn't look like you could park there very well. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> and, and what about you? Mentioned at the beginning, you got some brands in, involved. What's the what's the pitch to brands at the moment? Uh, yeah, how do they? How do you get them involved? Well, it's it, you know it's an exciting new platform. We want yeah. to be the home of people who care about motoring and motoring related yeah. content. We've already got a big audience. Conversations about those brands are happening already. Yeah. Um, so, you know, which has always been the sort of, I guess, social media network and, and forums and whatever's pitched yeah. to brands, isn't it? It's like your community of people who care mm. about you is here. Why don't you come here and interact with them? And I think Drive Tribe offers them a sort of unique way of interacting yeah. with them. Um, so are you charging them for to access or, I mean, I guess it sort of leads on a bit to what's the business, what's the business model ultimately? Uh, so the business, so it's only month well, How do you two. make money? Yes, so <laughs> I guess at the pretty, moment you're, very happy, with four, you're yes. very happy with four million on. Yes. Um, but as you look, say, a year or two down the line, I guess, I guess you know, one route you could go is where you charge brands to advertise, etc. But I suspect that feels like it you know, may... may I, I, I don't think there will be display quite right. advertising no, exactly. splattered all over the site. Exactly. Which, which, of course, the other problem that legacy publishers have is like, yeah. you know, they know how to sell certain sort of thing and they want a certain format and and you know if you're Facebook because you have an algorithmic feed mm. you brands pay Facebook in yeah. order to make their content 
appear more often to the right people, yeah. and I'm sure that will be part of the so you've model. You've got the sort of Facebook have. model in, in time. It's very, and and do you see, do you when you and of course we get lots of data. You know, we know who the people are on our yeah. platform who like Porsche. We know who the people on our yeah, platform absolutely. are who are interested in supercars, who are interested yeah. in old cars, who are interested in second houses. We can assemble those audiences even across tribes. Yeah, and you know, if brands have got interesting things to say to them, we can help put them in touch with each other. Yeah, it's quite powerful. It's quite powerful, and um, and and do you see that? I mean, if you got the four million, are they are they are they across the globe now? Kind of the people that are engaging on. Yes, I mean, um, you. I mean, it's it's quite. You, you, it doesn't have to be English speaking to form a community, and there are some German ones and some Polish ones and some other ones. Yeah. I mean, the interface is currently English language, so yeah, okay. It, it, the, the biggest market is the UK. The you know the most users are from the UK and then right. the US. But also Australia, South Africa, Europe, uh, Canada. So, so the, the top countries engaging with the platform are currently mostly English yeah. speaking, but I think for obvious reasons. But we have plans for it to go global, yeah. and eventually, you know, we will. I'm sure we will local language if I, if that's a word, yeah, yeah, the okay. interface, uh, and you know, have people worldwide who can encourage communities yeah. in different languages. And what keep? I mean, you've got, you've got lots on your plate in terms of the content, lots of different types. What, what's, what's the thing that keeps you awake or the kind of the things that, that is in terms of day to day? Uh, well, God, I've only been doing the job two months, so almost yeah. everything already. Um, so I, th I think, you know, that for, for it to succeed, it has to be the right balance, I think, yeah. of professionally produced content, um, sort of amateur, and I don't mean that pejoratively, but amateur no, no, generated content, and then professionally produced content by brands and other people like photographers or videographers. Yep. And I think making sure we've got the right balance of that stuff across the communities is like the important thing for us. We can't just focus on what we produce in this office because yep. we can't scale that well enough. The communities won't stay yep. alive. But likewise, you know, there are other publishers out there producing interesting content about the areas we care about. And yeah. if we pull back too much and it's just user generated, then they'll be forced to go to other places to find Indeed. that stuff. So, you know, we need to get that mix right. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and to manage all that, we need tools and the company has only been public for two months yeah. for users. And so we're working out what the tool set is of, you know, what do we need to build to manage tribes, to measure tribe health. I was going to say there's a huge community aspect there, yes, isn't there? Yeah, and how do you, you know, what's the sort of dashboard that helps us understand, um, you know, are, are there some tribe leaders whose engagement is going down or something? How yeah. do we help them? Which ones are going up and how do we spot those and, you know, future stars and make sure that they're widely circulated? Yeah. So we're thinking through communication programs about, you know, how we, you know, onboard people to tribes, how what we've learned in the first two months and how we help people understand yeah. in their tribes how they can do that. And then even when we release features, so we've just up increased, we've just enabled the feature that you can upload photos into comments, okay. which of course means we can now have challenges to the community. I had this great idea, which turned out to be a terrible idea, which was we should challenge everyone to get their petrol pump to one, two, three, four, twelve pound thirty four, take a picture and then yeah. upload it into the comments until somebody pointed out it's illegal to use mobile phones in a petrol station because they might blow up. So, yeah. So that kept me awake when I realised what I'd really done. see a lot really of people like, doing queues at the petrol station <laughs> yes, while they're well, trying, right. <laughs> trying to get the one, two, three, yes. four lined up. As it goes past, it's yeah. like, damn it. But, um, and, and if we can encourage um, tribe leaders to set challenges that are more sensible than that one, yeah. then that helps users understand how they can use the platform. Because we, yeah. again, like, how do we message four million people and go, you can now upload photos. So we can use the tribe leaders, I think, to help um, you know, make the platform more understandable and then help them get more engagement in their yeah. tribes. So. Okay. And who do you compete with? I mean, who do you, as a, as a kind of group, you know, if you start to look at, think about competitors or what, who do you, who, who do you see well, as Everyone always says everybody at this point, yes, but, yeah. um, but I, I, mean, I, I guess you've got, well, you've got group, I, the way I see it, you've kind of got groups and yes. you've got sort of, you've got potentially people like Facebook who are obviously social, pure, you know, the social networks. And then you've got maybe traditional publishers, the hay markets of the world with what car and then forums like petrol head, et cetera, or, or do you, is it none of those? Or well, it's, it's kind of all of them, and it's, it's all of them in that they are all doing an aspect of what we do, yeah. and none of them because none of them are combining it. I mean, there are Facebook groups, of course, but if you think about Facebook, if you're a brand, then you don't tend to have much interaction. You know, you tend to put stuff out there and a few people comment, but the people can't really talk to each other, and, and yeah. it tends to be quite one way. Traditional publishers, again, is quite one way. It's like, mm. here's our professional content, da -da, yeah. have it in the order that we say it in. Um, and then forums, 
there's several of those out there, but again, the functionality isn't quite there around yeah. sort of high quality publishing, I think. So, um, so I think they've all got aspects of what we've got, but I think Drive Tribe is, is, is unique in, I think, being that next generation publisher of marrying that freshly produced content, sort of social feed based, yeah. sort of following sort of model and UGC yeah. contributed stuff. Well, it may be too early for you to say, but are you starting to see the patterns? You know, things like the Wikipedia patterns where, you know, 80% are sort of browsers and 20% are, are, or it's probably more extreme as in Wikipedia, it's supposed to be 2,000 people, but you know, a small number contribute, much smaller number contribute and everybody else is yeah, browsing. Yeah, and, and, and that's kind of fine. Part, that's it's part like, and parcel of yeah. just, yeah. yeah. There's 20 plus thousand tribes, but 4 million users, so you know, yeah. you'll have to do the math quicker than I can yeah. do that, so what's yeah. that, 2 odd thousand to 1. Um, but, but that's fine, it's like not everybody yeah. needs to run a tribe, yeah. you might just and people can contribute because like, tribes are open. So the Ferrari tribe, anyone can publish in. So if you go somewhere, if you if I walk out there and see a Ferrari in Mayfair, I can take a load of pictures and upload, upload it to it. the tribe. Yeah. I don't have to be running a tribe and thinking about moderation and yeah. any of that sort of thing in order to contribute high quality content. Okay. Or I could go to the London Classic Car Show and like film a video and upload yeah. it to one of the sort of classic car tribes. Yeah. You know, all these things are possible without having to run a tribe. And so the, the scaling of tribe leader you know, sort of rich content contributor articles, yeah. videos, your small posts, commenters. And then, you know, we even have this tier of people who just bump stuff, which is the equivalent yeah. of liking. Yeah. Uh, and the algorithm kind of runs off bumping as much as other things. Yeah. And so just the action of bumping helps is, is a contribution. It's like yeah. showing what you like and helps surface good yeah. content to other people. Okay. And, I, I, and it always sort of fascinates me when obviously you've got your building out a new business and um, where are you when you recruit when you're recruiting from your building out your team where are you recruiting f where, where are you recruiting from I know it's probably very generous but do you did you consciously avoid people with traditional publishing backgrounds because of the baggage they've got or do you, do you know yeah I'm great to get your sort of thoughts uh, no I mean it's like you know well, I'm in my mid forties, and I yeah. used to be the editor of Witch magazine. So yeah. you know, <laughs> I'd be avoiding myself if I did yeah. that. So I think there's lots of people who've, who've kind of, you know, been on that journey. So so no, I mean, the, the, quite a lot of the content team have a car magazine background, okay. and you know, obviously you'd hire those people. They've got amazing contacts, and yeah. experience, and knowledge of cars. Um, but but we've got people who've been producing car videos for a long time as well as yeah. part of that. So you know, they know those things. Um, I mean, you are looking for a mix of skills, I think. So, yeah. you know, there's people out there who, who understand how to make content that does well, you know, on social. You know, yeah. Just tired someone who used to work at BuzzFeed sort of thing. So, you okay. know, you're looking for that sort of thing. But you need, I think it needs to be a blend. I think the trickiest thing for hiring at a startup is the sort of hiring order as much as anything. It's like, yes, who knows? Because you know, <clears throat> when you're add, adding one person to a 50 person team, it's kind of a bit easier because yeah. they've probably got a very defined role in yeah. the workflow. Whereas adding one person to a two person team, Indeed. it's like you suddenly end up with a lot more of this a bit of skill, but yeah. uh, so, so tr sorting out the hiring order is the sort of tricky Where thing. Where are you I've starting found. on that? Are you starting more on the user generated content and the, and the community side? So at the moment, we're, so we, have, so we have two community managers and at the okay. moment we're slightly scaling up the content side. So okay. we're hiring a sort side. of a person to do video, a person to manage organic social media, splitting that out from okay. sort of um, payment for the marketing function, uh, hiring a couple of people to do viral stuff, but also investing more in people with a sort of traditional motoring journalism yeah. background to make sure we can cover things like the motor shows and that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's sort of all sort of scaling out at the same yeah. time. So. Oh, great. <laughs> And you touched on a little bit at the beginning about the, um, the kind of long-term vision, but can you just paint a picture of, of, of what Drive Tribes might look like in five years' time? Blimey, there's a question. We, we currently plan all the development about two weeks no, at I was a time say, in a very indeed. agile way. Yeah. So, well, so I think in my ideal world, um, there'll, there'll be a tribe for everything. Uh, there'll be a set of tribes around a sort of passion area that people care yeah. about. So. You, you could see that you know TV, football, food, fashion, yeah. all, all these yeah. yeah, all these things people really care about, and you can see, you can see bits of the Drive Tribe model exist out on the internet somewhere. Yeah. You know, there's <coughs> around food, there's professional 
um, publications yeah. and you get people to some of those uploading their own recipes yeah. but like they probably go somewhere else to talk about it and yeah. you know and then there's Instagram for pictures of food and, and so how do you yeah. know all this so I think there will be lots of those areas where the model that we've built will be um, applicable um, and that we will do the same sort of thing we've done in motoring which is yeah. like how can you get some high profile people on board how can you encourage people to assemble around much more specific yeah passion areas that they care about and then how can we support those communities with uh, professional content so giving them access to the things that of themselves they won't be able to manage to do yeah uh, that's a, that's a, that's a good, I, I love the vision and I think at the moment I hope to steer clear of general news yeah indeed. <laughs> having done it for the last five years I think that's quite well taken care of as well <laughs> yes. and I like the idea that you've got this you, you know you obviously having those high profile people as the sort of the the, the kind of Terrible, terrible, I was going to say the kind of key in the ignition, bad motoring, bad <laughs> See, motoring. See, it's too hard to bad do motoring, motoring pun. pun. <laughs> but to, to act as that catalyst to get the initial community around, because clearly that in, in, you know, in, drive, in drive tribes, the sort of motoring case is key. You know, the three, your three fans, very high profile, strong TV program, etc. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a, and what, and, uh, and, and, and do you see, do you see traditional publishers getting involved more in, in time? Are you, so, well, I mean, not sitting here today, it's hard, you yeah. know, I mean, you, you can sort of draw them into sets, can't you? Of, yeah. You know, sort of uh, traditional leg legacy news publishers are kind of all kind of operate the same way yeah. at the moment. And there's a bunch of sort of new digital startup ones and they all have their own sort of yeah. um, model. But the, the, the interesting thing slash worrying thing is for them is like none of them have, you know, there isn't that sort of personalization social yeah, model actually yeah. out there. Um, and you can see all, you know, social networks have, have kind of come up and shown the power of yeah. personalization and recommendation and algorithm and community. And, that, yeah. and you kind of look, you know, and The Guardian's probably done the best job of assembling a community of people. Yeah. Um, and Comment is Free kind of provides a platform for some people yeah. to have a voice. But still, they have a single Guardian view, homepage view of the world, yeah. you know, which is fine, you know, if you want to know what the Guardian yeah, yeah. is about something, there's somewhere to go and find out. Like got a bit of a if I want, to know, if I want yeah. to know what the Arsenal scores are, it's like there's nothing on the homepage, yeah. why is this? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, oh, great. Yeah. And, fi and final question, who, if you look at, if you were to look out at the world of kind of publishing community and the sort of world you're, you're in, who, you know, which, which, which businesses out there do you, do you kind of really admire as a kind of... Um, I mean, I mean, there's lots of things I wish I'd done over the yeah, years. Okay. Um, <laughs> so the BuzzFeed News app I really liked and was quite like the, um, bizarrely, the Scottish television one before, which had a sort of put a live blog feed-based approach over right. news. Um, and, and I thought that was great. They've discontinued it now, sadly. Um, uh, the sort of vo the card-based um, mechanism of Vox yeah. was another thing that I wished I'd invented. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, the Breaking News app has now been shut down. That was great from a Breaking News point of view. Um, you know, there's, there's lots of people doing sort yeah. of great, great work out there. I, mean, I, I guess the question is, who do you admire that's commercially successful in the yes. long run? Yeah. And, and it feels like that's a much shorter to vanishingly small list yes, right it's now. Yes, it's, it's a short list. But yeah, I and, you, and you can see people like Facebook and Google taking the money out of, you know, taking the money away from traditional publishers in, in terms of, you know, display yeah, advertising money. And people talk about display advertising going up. Actually, when you look at it, Facebook and Google take an increasingly large share of it, yeah. which implies that the amount going to traditional publishers is going down at some yeah. point. You know, you feel so you're going to be fighting for that dollar in, in or, or pound in time with Facebook and Facebook and Google. I guess so. Yeah. So in time. So well, it's a great place to end. And obviously, you've got a blank. You've got a blank sheet here, so you'll be able to do in, create some of the things that you you perhaps wish you'd done in the past. So, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Thank <laughs> you very much, Malcolm. Thanks Thank for you. Taking the time. Cheers. Thank you.